नमस्ते ऑल गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम टू द मॉर्निंग सेशन नमस्ते सुनील जी सभी को नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम वी आर डूइंग यू एच वी थ्री लेक्चर फोर एंड यस्टरडे वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट हाउ द सेल्फ वुड लुक वेन वी हैव अनफोल्डेड और वेन वी हैव बिकम अवेयर ऑफ the higher activities within us the activities of contemplation which has to do with seeing the relationship our relationship with every other unit and seeing our participation in the relationship the activity of understanding which has to do with understanding the harmony in every unit in the existence and the activity of realization being able to see the coexistence the submergence of all the units in space the basis for the relationship the basis for the self organization the self energization of the units so um we were taking questions and discussions regarding this yesterday in the questions there was uh it came up in our discussion that there was some confusion regarding when we talk of our participation there was confusion regarding our feeling and our participation so in yesterday's assignment we had spoken of this and um, hopefully several of you may have done this assignment yesterday i hope um in the assignment we had said that in all your interactions with others with human beings to observe whether the focus was in trying to change the others feeling or change the others behavior or in the relationship were we focusing on ensuring our own female feeling and then participating in the relationship because many a time when this discussion came up uh during the discussion it became apparent that there was confusion that if we have the right feeling then we will not be doing anything outside but this is not what we were saying we were saying that having the right feeling within is when we refer to our natural acceptance so to see the natural acceptance to see our intention and with that have the right ensure the right feeling within us we can only ensure the right feeling if we have trust on the others intention if we don't doubt the others intention so if we don't doubt the others intention if we are able to see that nobody wants to make a mistake we can have the right feeling for them then we can look at their competence evaluate their competence correctly and decide what kind of program to make with them depending on their competence so if the competence is low we will make a program a certain way if the competence is higher we will make a program a different way of course if the other person's competence is more than mine then i will learn from the other so the program will depend on the other's competence but the intention is pure the intention is the same in all the natural acceptance is the same in all that is a given there is no condition on that so there we can be free to have the right feeling for the other and with that right feeling 
then we are able to see our role more clearly our participation in the relationship more clearly otherwise we are looking for the right feeling from them or we are expecting the change to happen in them and when it doesn't happen we are getting disturbed that means the happiness is not there within us but we are trying to get it from outside so these were the two differences uh in what we were talking about um so if any of you would like to share your experiences from doing this exercise yesterday you can take that first of all were we able to do this exercise you can uh, mention in the chat were you able to do this yesterday exercise yesterday i have very few yeses were we able to do this exercise yesterday okay there are several yeses and occasional no so all right would anybody like to share their experience or their observation from yesterday's exercise what could you notice anybody would like to as long as we have observed you know whether we actually had the right feeling in the interaction or not most important thing is to observe even if we did not have the right feeling this observation is what is going to propel us forward in our self exploration um we have a couple of hands we going to be hearing you after a long time good morning yes. yeah good morning i'm there but uh, yes. we have new uh, yes. friends so i thought yeah uh, did they when we talk of competence i have this question that uh, uh, we say that uh, we need to be complementary so mm -hmm. when i look back my journey what i had been doing all uh, all these years many many years with my husband or children who are adults now uh, that i i feel that i had been resolving a lot of their issues uh, like being proactive and now at this point i am trying to think uh, sometimes stepping away with the right feeling of course with the right feeling stepping away and allowing them to find their ways also is a kind of help like when a small child they need to learn to walk all the time we should not be carrying them we should allow them to uh, fall sometimes like two steps we leave them sometimes we hold the hand so in uh, developing other kinds of competence also should we should i have followed that same one because now i can see that in most things i had been intervening and i had been trying to make things easy for them and i can see that uh, that um, uh, nego negotiation or communication that kind of um, uh, abilities i can see lacking in them and they try to lean on me uh, so this also could have been a help that i definitely maintain the right feeling for them but i should have had the wisdom that at, uh, how much i should have left them alone to find their own answers or find their own solutions so i'm just in retrospect i'm trying to think that because at this point now i start expecting that uh, like all of them should have done this or that but even now i can see that they try to lean on me even i like till yesterday i was like i thought that oh this these these problems have come up and then i should talk to him on behalf of her and then i should talk to her also daughter father i'm talking about <coughs> mm -hmm. but then i thought that for for a change let me be by the river 
they are struggling to swim maybe so i am there i will be uh, like i will come uh, to help if there is a need but not proactively the way i used to do so should this also be done in developing competence in the others that's good yeah yeah so there is a fine line there can be a fine line between guiding the other and controlling the other or you know enforcing our way with the other so when the child is very small we give very clear instructions to the child to do things a certain way and and the child follows by example in fact you don't have to tell the child a lot of things a lot of things get imbibed in the child by seeing the parents so the children are able to absorb they are like a little sponge they absorb everything you know they see in the parents so the good sanskars the bad sanskars they are watching all the time and they are picking up these sanskars unknowingly just assuming them to be right that everything that the parent does is right and so at that stage also even from that early stage we can try to you know rather than tell them do this do that don't do this don't do that we can try to start them on that journey of checking with their natural acceptance so like i have said before even a child as small as 2 years 3 years can comprehend that if we say it you know in their kind of language in a language that they understand rather than use big words then uh they start being able to become self reliant and they can be uh, they can start referring to their own natural acceptance so this process can start early on of course since we were not in that process at that time when they were small children we may not have been able to do it but there is no problem even now even now we can start with that guidance of making them self sufficient so that they are not dependent on us rather they can see the relationship they can participate in the relationship but at the same time they can make their own decisions with confidence by evaluating rightly and that will come with um frequent referral to the natural acceptance so that part i think is important a lot of times i'm not saying for you but in general lot of us as parents we think our job first of all we think that this is my child so it is of course it is my responsibility to care for the child to guide for the child but i certainly don't have to make the child a miniature version of myself because the child has you know the self has the own interests own um ideas own opinions is on its own journey and so i need to help the child blossom in their own journey rather than thrust mine on them so many a times we tell our children what they should become when they get older in terms of professions without realizing that the child is has been on a journey from before and is on another journey and this journey we happen to be related in this manner but that the child sanskars are his or her own from before their interests their passions may be different from mine and all of that 
so in every field every sphere we can be there to guide the child certainly by all means the child should have that confidence that they can come to us and we will always be there to help them if needed but at the same time we will make effort for the child to develop their own competence so uh, that i think can be done at any point in time even if we did not do it before we can do it now does that answer the question yes yes it is uh because uh, uh, looking back i can see that small little things at the small when she was small or we were new in our marriage which i could have uh, allowed them to do but uh, i think in hindi uh, once kumar bhai had differentiated the two terms like mo and mamata so mm -hmm. mamata that affection turned into mm -hmm. maybe mo like mm -hmm. i was so involved i wanted to make things perfect for them i got involved so i was involved like entangled and then when things go wrong then i will be affected all these things but then small little things like me in class 1 class 2 if i had allowed her to uh, take decisions or my husband who was like um, uh, he didn't have much experience in his from his family also because um, he was not allowed to do many things so i used to do lot of things like simple things like going to the market and bringing vegetables so uh, he would not bring fresh ones and this so i started doing on my own so that way now that now if i expect him or her that now they're uh, old enough or grown up enough now this ability should be there now i am taking it on my own that i also didn't allow i did everything because my nature is that being proactive and that kind of thing so that in a way effect affected them adversely i did, did not develop the capacities in them so um, i think better let than never so yesterday also she was having some problem and she wrote to him uh, asked him but then he is silent then she also would not be able to go forward in the communication normally in these situations i would like in immediate like i would talk to him taking her side and then make her also understand that way but yesterday for the first time i thought no let me just have some time let me see how things go ahead then if it goes uh, like if uh, my uh, participation is required i'll be there i'm there but then i will not do it proactively uh, so that's how i thought about it yesterday this is a finer things like enforcing like this course or Uh, marriage this proposal that proposal or this course those are gross that we can easily see now but then the other capabilities which we should uh, give them enough space from uh, a very early age so that they become self reliant and now i can see that yesterday thank you ji the only word of caution for everybody that i will say here is ensuring the right feeling in all of this yes. yes otherwise it may be that we avoid doing something because of a feeling of opposition that should not mm. be oh yes you are just talking about guiding with the right feeling so yes. at all times you are available they know that you are there but at the same time you also give them the opportunity you try to guide them so that they can come up with the answers for themselves hmm. thank you you wanted to share something yeah hello namaste didi namaste namaste sabhi ko am i audible yes you are audible yeah i could actually connect with whatever rupalin didi was just sharing mm -hmm. so yesterday uh, actually i was born and brought up in a joint family so when i was just newly married i used to call my mother my chachi ji both i have two chachi ji so i used to call them every day talking mm -hmm. to them then slowly you know, because of my job and all other things it reduced to twice in a week and then 
so but there were uh, yesterday i could observe that there were some assumptions in me that i am calling them they should also call me and i am mm-hmm. telling them to do certain things a certain way you know, based on my understanding so they are my mothers they may or they may not do the things that i do in a that certain way but those assumptions they were affecting of late i could see that you know as we grow i think that i was assuming certain things from them or certain things about them and i was talking little to them so i am not talking very actively now maybe because of responsibilities also and because i was on leave for the last two days because of my you know, bad throat and cold and cough so i could contempt you know, i could see things day before yesterday also so i just you know i did not write anything but i was there that notebook i have i have wrote those questions so i was just focusing and i came to know yesterday only there are so many things that i have just assumed without even talking to them mm-hmm. so but many things i realized that i should first talk to them but i don't know because those things are quite old now so i don't know whether i should talk to them or not or whether should i go on assuming things like this so can you just help me divi like and i will share one thing my uh, mere jo bade chacha ji he used to love me a lot he used to care me so much about me mm-hmm. and now he many times he will not pick my call mm-hmm. so i have assumed that maybe because of chachi ji he is not picking yeah so but yesterday i talked to them mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, just normal talk, but I could not share this thing with her. So I just, I'm sorry. But please yeah. give me yeah, a moment. Yeah. Sure. Yes. Many a time it happens like this that we have assumed something about the other, and that continues to bother us. so rather than keep this unhappiness within hold on to it why not try to resolve it so in trying to resolve it the first step i have to take myself first and foremost i have to ensure the right feeling within myself first and foremost i have to be able to see that the other's intention is pure just like mine nobody wants to make me unhappy if there if there is any such incident it is a lack of competence this point should be very clear intention and competence we must look at them separately it is when we club the two together that there are problem when we can't see the two clearly so if we can see that the intention is very pure nothing wrong with the intention there itself i can have the right feeling because when i refer to my natural acceptance i can see that is what i want so i can have the right feeling for them and then look at the behavior and see where the issue is in this case we are not even sure about the behavior i mean we don't know what yeah, is the yeah. reason i mean i have just assumed things this exactly. is just i wanted to share that after you know contempt after thinking for two days uh, i realized that i may be assuming things just like mm-hmm. that and nothing nothing is wrong with the intention of the other mm-hmm. and how this assuming thing is affect you know this assuming thing has affected one of my relations in such a bad way that had i talked to them had i tried to know the real things so this would not no, have happened no problem about you know nothing is uh, beyond repair yeah. even though we can you know if one person doesn't pick our call 
rather than assuming the worst, we can also think that perhaps they are too busy, perhaps something else, perhaps so many issues. Yeah, could yeah, this, thing, yes, yeah. this thing, yes, this thing I realized yesterday only that, oh, I am also busy. I also don't give them a call so frequently as mm-hmm. I used to do so you know, when I was, say, 10 years or if I say 10 years or 12 years back, I used to make so frequent calls. But now because of, you know, responsibilities increasing at the workplace also. So things are not so easy. During the daytime, I'm not even you know, free to talk to anyone. It, it's, yes. it's, it's difficult for them also. True. They are also having you know, busy schedules. Yeah, and a lot of times, if I mean, if they happen to be in the same town, same city, one can go and look them up. That makes all the difference. But even if they are not in the same town, one can talk to, like you're saying, you know, the spouse. And just mention that you, know, you have been trying to reach and is everything all right with them? Are they okay? Is everything fine? And leave it at that. See, if I am with the right behavior, right feeling, right behavior, even if immediately the other person doesn't come around slowly they are able to see that my, i have ensured my feeling i have ensured my behavior and this is something that nobody has a problem with isn't it if i have the yeah. right behavior right feeling right behavior nobody has an issue with that so yeah. if they continue to see my feeling my behavior being consistent definite then they will turn around. Things will start changing. But they need to have that trust, you know, that assurance in that relationship from you. That assurance they will get when it is reflected in your behavior consistently for some time. But one can always do that. And when you do, you will find you are so satisfied within, you are so comfortable within, it will no longer bother you. Right now, we may not be talking and we may have assumed many things and we may be unhappy with it. Even though we are not talking, this is playing within us all the time and it is disturbing us. So now we can correct it. Yes, yes, Didi. Thank you. Thank you so much, Didi. I am I, I, I am learning so much from you. <laughs> you are all learning from one another. Thank yes, you. yes, definitely, Didi. Thank you. Talaji, I think you had raised your hand yesterday also. Yes. Yeah. Namaste, Didi. Namaste, Sabiko. Uh, Didi, <clears throat> I wanted uh, to uh, share the reflection that uh, yesterday I could be able to observe uh, my state of mind whether with the interaction I am in opposition or I am in relation means whether I am talking in a good feeling or I am having a opposition feeling so my observation is uh, since I am having a sanskar of doubt on intention of others so in 90% cases, I started with reconditioning the of doubting the other's intention. But as soon as I catch up that I did wrong, immediately I tried to correct it also. Mm-hmm. Uh, in some cases, I could be able to correct. In some cases, I could not be able to correct also. And the second thing, my question yesterday was, like, uh, I have, uh, like, with my son, I have a feeling of, I mean, I'm saying he, uh, we have, uh, like, he's always in opposition to me. So now I started with uh, correcting my uh, feelings. Uh, I come down and... Uh, Internally also, I wanted to observe that how do I compliment him. Mm -hmm. But since he is uh, 
a totally in opposition mm -hmm. so i mean how do i communicate to him that was my question yesterday hello yes. Yes, i'm yes. getting your, your voice didi okay. um are others able to hear me ha huh, yeah yeah and now i i am also able to hear you okay okay so uh, i got your question so if somebody in the immediate family is having a feeling of opposition towards me they must have some reason for it isn't it i may not yeah. be aware of many mistakes that i may have done in the past in the relationship in our life yeah together. and yeah. so they just as i assume things about the other based on past experience they also may have assumed things about me based on their past experience with me so what to do now now in this case also you will notice that the first and foremost thing to do is to ensure my feeling why because when i ensure my feeling when i don't right. doubt his intention when i can see that his intention is pure that he is himself in trouble you see he is himself unhappy yeah. when i can yeah. see that then it is very clear to me that just as my natural acceptance is to make the other happy his natural acceptance is also the same when i see that right i have the right feeling for them okay yeah. now i look mm -hmm. at the competence so the difference right. is when i see my own feeling and when i mm. bring my feeling in line with my natural acceptance the moment i bring my mm. feeling in line with my natural acceptance i am happy i am calm i am comfortable ah. all right. right so that's the first thing that will happen he may not have changed yeah. but you will become comfortable ah. Right. Now, with that, right. with that comfort within, with the right feeling within, now when right. I look at him, I may be able to see that he is struggling with his own issues. That okay. he is having okay. his own okay. problems, his own issues. Yeah. And with that, this, what I am assuming is opposition only towards me, maybe. Uh, mm -hmm. uh triggered by his own um sort of unhappiness within okay hmm so what i can right. do is my participation yeah. can be to assure him of the relationship how do i assure him of the relationship i continue ah, to be there i continue to be there for him and i continue to do whatever it takes to help him to help smoothen his way and i continue to be with that behavior till he gets assured of my definiteness of behavior and then i can ask him if something is bothering him if something is troubling him how i can help okay i will not try to okay. find out why he is not doing what i asked him to do and all that that's like complaining nobody likes to ah, hear right. the moment you start complaining the other person will switch off and not be interested in talking mm -hmm. so first and foremost i have to take that initiative i to i have to have the right feeling within me whatever you are expecting mm -hmm. from the other first you have to give it it will not happen so easily yes. isn't it yeah, yeah yeah so and the expectation should be right ultimately what's going to mm. happen is when you have the right feeling you will realize yeah. that you are no longer expecting the right feeling from the other even if the other yeah does not give you that right feeling it will not bother you as much because you are your cup is already full you have the right feeling within you with that you yeah. are able to be magnanimous you are able to be helpful to the other without asking for mm -hmm. anything in return right now our so called love is conditional 
I'm not saying for you especially. I'm just saying in general. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hmm. If the hmm. other person listens to us, we feel a certain way towards them. If they don't listen to us, we immediately have opposition within. Uh -huh, right. Kind right. of conditional right. Um, affection that um, mm -hmm. will not help because the yeah. my that condition when I am putting that means. Only if this expectation is met, will I have the right feeling for you. But to have the right feeling, if you look at our natural acceptance, we want to have the right feeling based on our natural acceptance all the time. In ah, fact, right. for everyone. But we can start with our huh. family. So you'll notice that yeah. you ensure your feeling and your behavior and you mm -hmm. continue with that for some time, the other will come around. Okay. Slowly. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Right. Thank you, Didi. Thank you so much. Welcome. We are getting into all these. I think these are more issues that uh, we can discuss when we come to the exercises. Um, ah, right. Yeah. Okay, so at least uh, now we could be able to see our uh, what is this, we could be able to observe our state of mind, whether uh, uh, how I am feeling uh, okay. with every interaction. True, very nice. This is very important because we have been suffering so much without knowing why we are okay. suffering. We have been huh. assuming okay. it is because of that one, that one, that one, so many people that we are trying to change. Okay. And right. in that process, we are not able to change, of course, the other. Yeah. And we suffer. Yeah. yeah. All that misery for nothing. We can resolve it within ourselves very quickly. Yes. 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 Thank you. Right. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. We'll just take one more observation, then we'll go forward. Uh, madam, uh, in the uh, that below. Um, it is shown behavior, work, and participation. Participate actually behavior and work means participation. No, ma'am. Why it is shown as a separate uh, section? Participation in larger order. Yeah. So in your behavior, when we talk of behavior, we are saying interaction with other human beings. Yes. Right. So largely, behavior has to do with other human beings. When we are saying work, we are largely talking about our interaction with nature and how we relate to nature. Right? When we say participation, it involves both. We are seeing our relationship with both and we are participating in that relationship. We are seeing our role very clearly and with that we are participating. Can you see that? Ma'am, actually uh, my doubt is whether that participation should be given as a separate section or that red line uh, need not be there, isn't it ma'am? It doesn't matter so long as you do it, you know, let's not go by, these are also slides have been made by somebody and with best interest so that the slides are just for us like a okay. reminder uh -huh. no, to, to, to tell us about this what we are doing okay to make us understand uh, so, so essentially, actually, it's, it's, hmm. essentially in this slide hmm. the, uh, the upper part the one that is up to that line you know the uh, where the yellow part is there so the purple and the yellow this much is within me. Below that, you can see the arrow and it says body. Through the body, I am expressing myself in my behavior with other human beings, in my work with the rest of nature. And through the body itself, I am participating in the larger order. So one is just expressing in the interaction, mm -hmm. right? Yes. I could be doing that 
seeing my relationship or not seeing my relationship isn't it hmm but when i say participation in the larger order it makes it very clear that i am seeing the relationship with the other with nature and i am participating not just within my immediate circle but in you know whatever interaction i can have with the larger order the larger systems society in general and so on yeah yes ma'am and also this what is this dynamic activity and state activity ah, yes this question yes, come yes, earlier and i forgot to address it mm -hmm. so if you look at state activity it is something that is uh you can say an impression or a, uh, something that is already within you like let's say the lowest activity taste and select so like we gave that example you know i like a sweet somebody brings a sweet to my house i taste it i like it now that taste is there in me for that sweet right hmm. next hmm. time when i go to the market and i think of buying a sweet when i look at all the sweets there i select this one why because i have a taste of it already within me so the taste is already there in me that is state activity now when i make that dynamically at that time when i make that decision of selecting i do it on the basis of that taste that is already there can you see this difference yes yes, yes ma'am so state activity is something that is already within you the dynamic is on the basis of which you take some decision at that moment mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. you have a basis for comparing within you on that basis you analyze and you make some selection at of something that you want to do based on those you know um on that basis of comparison yeah mm -hmm. and how can we do uh, explain the same with the that uh, thought regarding thought comparing and analyze analyzing that's what i just said no uh, no uh, taste and uh, um, selection okay sir ma'am but comparing and how can we perhaps the you, you missed it perhaps i just mentioned this Ayyo. on the basis of something of you know yeah some um way of comparing so supposing i have to choose between um like that example we gave i want to build a house mm -hmm. that is my desire now on the basis of this desire now how to go about it when i am thinking about that supposing a base for comparison for me is how much money i should spend on the various parts yeah. of the house no so now my comparison will be about how much to spend mm -hmm. so on that i analyze mm -hmm. the various costs and i decide something mm -hmm. but my basis for comparison was already there within me with that mm -hmm. basis i decide something i analyze and decide something okay 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 ma'am thank you okay okay i think uh, maybe we can go further uh, we are going quite slow i think we can uh, move ahead now yeah so this much about the self we'll do more detail about the self uh, later for now we'll move on to the existence so if we look at the existence the existence is in the form of coexistence there are units and there is space and these units are submerged in space and you'll find that there are two types of units there are material units 
and there are consciousness units. So we have to understand, we have to be able to see all of these, we have to be able to understand all of these realities. So one is the space, the space is ever present, it is there, has been there, will be there. The units, if we look at the units that are submerged in this space, you will find that there are differences. Why we have talked of them separately? Because units have different characteristics from space. We said space is ever-present, it is there, it is all-pervading, it is unlimited in size, it has no boundary. But if you look at the units, the units are limited in size. There is a particular boundary. Any unit you observe, from the smallest unit, if you look at, say, you know, a pen, a pencil, if you look at a tree, if you look at a plant, there is some boundary to it. It's limited in size. If you look at bigger units, if you look at the Earth, if you look at other planets, Everything, there is a boundary, there is a limit to the size. But space, it is unlimited, there is no boundary. Another thing, in the units, the units are active. There is activity in the units. So if you look at the material unit, an example of that is the body. So in the body, there is some or the other activity going on. There is composition of some things, there is decomposition of some other things, there is formation of something, there is deformation of something, and so on. And this you will find in all the material units. In the consciousness unit, also there is activity. You can see that Within us, we are constantly thinking something, imagining something, constantly expecting something. So this activity also we can see within us is there all the time. All these activities are going on within us all the time. So the activity is there in the units. But if you look at space, space is no activity. In the space, the units are submerged, and the units there is activity, but space is no activity. Then if you look at you know, the material unit and the consciousness unit, you find that in the material unit, one important difference between the two, material units are temporary. There is formation of that unit, then there is deformation of that unit. So a plant, you put a seed, the plant grows, and eventually, you know, after it has grown fully and all the plants, you know, when it goes through this cycle completion, then it dies at some point. And this is true for all material units. So they are temporary. In the consciousness unit, it is not so. They are not temporary in time, they are continuous in time. Although limited in size, limited in space, it is continuous in time. So it does not, you know, undergo this, uh, this cyclical going back to the soil and coming back up and this whole, you know, cycle that the material units go through, the consciousness units don't do that, they are continuous. In the material units, you find that there is recognition and fulfillment, and it is definite, that is how it is. They don't have any choice in the matter. This is how the material units are. 
in the case of the consciousness unit this recognition and fulfillment of course is there and this is on the basis of assuming this assuming can keep changing if the assumption keeps changing the recognition and fulfillment also keeps changing so the behavior also keeps changing it is not definite it is not definite until we get to knowing so the consciousness unit has the potential to know and the consciousness unit can go you know the assumption or the acceptance when it is based on knowing then the recognition and fulfillment can become definite so the potential to know is there in the consciousness so this is a little bit about the space if there is any question so far on what i have talked of then we can take it otherwise we'll move on namaste to all ji namaste my question is that we can see material thing but uh, how we can see consciousness uh, can you quote any example yeah so one example of the consciousness is the self right now if you see material things how are we seeing they are very gross so we use the help of the body take the help yeah. of the body and we yeah. use the sense organ the eye right and so we you know this image of whatever it is it is falls on the retina this much uh, this is obvious yeah. yeah we can see material but uh, how to see consciousness yeah the consciousness unit is far more subtle than the material unit isn't it so you are not able to see it with the gross eye okay you can only experience it ah you can experience What? you can That's now we are able to see the activities within one second so many of us are shared that we can see the activities going on within us i can see my expectations i can see my thoughts i can see my feelings i can see some sanskars yeah. so i can see many of the activities going Why on within breaking me. but essentially what we are saying let me just respond to the question essentially if you know something is more subtle than what the gross can see obviously the gross cannot see what is something far more subtle than it so that okay thank you for that we don't use the gross eyes if we are trying to see the self through the gross eyes we will not be able to see it what we okay, need to do yeah yes. what we need to do to be able to see the self is to look within that capacity is there within us that potential is there within us to be able to see the self to be able to see all of this that is being discussed about the existence all that can be seen within but we have to develop our Hello, competence why why she is breaking i think i think your connection there is some issue because others are able to hear me so okay 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 thank you yes i got the uh, answer thank you madam yeah okay yeah morning devi morning ji uh, devi my anyway it is not a question that's uh, i am assuming like this related to space Mm -hmm. the units are active in this space mm -hmm. but actually space has no activity mm -hmm. so can we compare it with uh, the atomic structure like where electrons are moving around the proton but overall if you take an atom uh, there is no activity is this my comparison looks to be okay or something to be different i am not sure i get you but anyway what i can see like electrons protons whatever it is you have you know 
uh, some part of it where there is activity but then you also have what is that emptiness in that area right so there is yeah yeah so space is uh, there inside and outside the units the space is all around the units the space is everywhere it is also inside the units okay that um, it has no boundary it is not that um, it's not that it is only in the space where the unit are up there it is even there where the unit are there can you get me like if you see the human body right it is a material unit now in the human body also there are organs there are tissues there are so many things there are cells but space is also there if you look at the self the self has activity but space is also there space is inside outside all around everywhere in the units outside the units above the units below the units around the units everywhere is that help yes sir yes mm-hmm. okay. thank you thank you okay we are almost out of time ganesh chatopadhyay ji is there but i think we'll have to take your question or your comment tomorrow um there is just a minute more and um, sunil ji if there is any announcement to be made we can make that today's discussion was on existence and we'll try to reflect on that and i will put some assignment in the group also ji ji thank you so much